back. There is a new stack of notes that has been printed. Yesterday the stack was soon turned into an empty one, so if you missed out on it, there are more copies here. And today I would like to start with a few corrections on what I said yesterday. So I the theorem to the effect if we take a algebraic number field, a finite extension of Q, then in the multiplicative group K star, problem that I refer to as the discrete logarithm problem in K star has an efficient solution. And in the case that we can trace K by a function field of a curve over a finite field. So if I take a transcendental a finite extension, can you do the same in K star? And I mentioned that that was even easier, but there here because this K star contains logarithm problem in FQ star is notoriously difficult. Your microphone is making some noises. Um, I wonder... And what, what can you do about it? Uh, I don't know. Maybe put the... Maybe try putting it in your jacket pocket. Okay. We can always change it. Oh, is it maybe this animal that needs to be a bit more visible? I don't know. Okay. We'll see. Okay, we'll try. Thank you. So that means that uh, it is certainly not possible to do in general the discrete logarithm problem there. And in fact, also in the number of case, the roots of unity require special treatment. But in these function field cases, the roots of unity they are much larger. And what you should do is restrict to the discrete logarithm problem in this slightly smaller group. So that is one correction to yesterday. Another correction to yesterday is that I was referring to Jordan Ellenberg's book as still not. I'm not sure what it to be. Yeah, nor am I. Let's see. How do you, can you test the source of the What, I, what happens if I put it here? Maybe then the thing sticks. Oh, that's better or worse? Oh, hmm. Let's see, where is this thing? Okay. So is the wire having some friction somewhere? I don't know. Yeah. Well, what I can do is a belt maybe. If I know how to do this, oh yes, okay. I see what, what it is. Well, the other one didn't uh, didn't work yesterday. Okay, so let's keep the tension. So Jordan Allen Jordan Allen book of many of you bought a copy. I refer to as being entitled space. The correct title is shape and I think it is not yet sold out. The third comment that I would like to make is that I was talking about insisted will give Yeah, this is a little unpleasant. Now I start dealing with myself as well. Well, Joan is solving the problem. So that 
this further uh, comment. Okay, so I hope this one works better. So what is blowing up? Well, let me remind you of the problem that we were talking about. When we have two integers A and B, then in Euclid we learn about the GCD of A and B, which has this property, and this is something that we like number fields. So let me start by introducing some notation that will be used all the time for number fields. So I fix k that is a number field, a finite extension, a field extension of the field of rational numbers and everything that we are going to do will happen inside k. And one of the important things that we will do inside is multiply subsets. If we have two subsets S and T, then S times T is by definition the additive subgroup generated X times Y with in S and Y in T. So that consists of all finite sums plus or minus XI, YI, where plus or minus integer x in s y i is in t so this is an additive subgroup of k in this in particular non t is always t sum in there so an important notation that i will be using all the time and i will be interested so a suppering R of K, you know what that means. And just in case you are doubting, subrings are always supposed to have the unit element of K in them. And it is an interesting exercise, which I think is all known to show that, that being a suppering is equivalent equal to R without R consisting of the zero 
long. The main issue here is to prove this implies that the unit element is actually in R. Interesting and not completely trivial exercise. An easier exercise is that they are all Noetherian. All subrings of a number field are Noetherian. There is a special class of numberings that will be integers, and those are the orders. An order in K is a subring R of the form. Z times S with S finite. S a finite subset of K. And not for every finite subset this will be a ring, but this expresses only that R is as an finitely generated. Requiring here that the of R or equivalent the Q is spent R is equal to K R may be living in a subfield for example Z it's it's also an and one of the reasons in this for strict to orders is that they fall under the heading of finally generated abelian groups and is the way we will typically represent them in our algorithm. So you specify an order by writing down, for example, such a set S, often a basis of the ring over Z. One important property of orders is that there is a unique maximal order, OK, that is the union over all R and K that are orders, and it is a theorem from algebraic number field that this is also an order, it is the ring of integers of K consisting of all elements that are zeros of monic polynomials with coefficients in Z. Why this OK plays a small role in our algorithms, it certainly may play a role in our proofs. So this is maximal order, and the maximal order has a pleasing property, and that is with respect to fractional ideals. So R in K, a subring, then a fractional R ideal, the R from the notation is a sub K, so it really depends also K, a subset of K of the form. S S subset of K non-zero elements which should be non-empty. So non-empty is to avoid the zero element that is not a fraction of our ideal. Another way of formulating this definition is that a fractional R ideal, maybe you should say in K, but our K is fixed, that is simply a finitely generated O R submodule of K. In particular, if R is equal to the ring Z, then a fractional Z ideal is simply a non-zero, finitely generated additive subgroup of K. And these fractional ideals, they come in because if I attempt 
to replace Z by R in this equation. And I take two elements, A and B, that say from K, from K star, let's say, then it may not be possible to find a third element of K star satisfying this condition. There are fields for which not a single order has this property for all A and B. That is due to the possibility that class number may be greater than one. And that is the reason that yeah, if the set of principal ideals is not close addition, then we have to look at a larger class of ideals. All directional our ideals are a little much for us because as I recall, as I told you yesterday, once you have this GCD, what you do is that you divide it away from A and B, so that you replace A and B by smaller that are co-prime. And that's also going to happen these fractional ideals, we have two fractional R ideals, and instead of principle, they will typically satisfy a somewhat weaker property, and we like that same property to be satisfied by the ideal, that property is called invertibility. So, an R invertible ideal is an, is a fractional frac let's say a fractional r ideal for which there k in k which may be a subset, there exists a A is equal to R. So R is viewed as the unit element. R times an R ideal is that R ideal itself, so it is really a neutral element with respect to multiplication. And what you like to do is think of J as the inverse of R. But of course, then J should just be a subset. If this is true, then it is automatic that the, I, that the ideal generated by J, well, first of all, it is actually finitely generated, so you can make J finite if it exists at all. Then this Rj is the set of all x's in K for which x times i that we called the inverse of i. And it is easy to know that set of vertible ideals in K is a group under multiplication. The inverse I just wrote down and the unit element is equal to R. And what we like to do is add up invertible ideals. Principal ideals are invertible because if I take a principle, is just a set of multiples of some zero element alpha in the field. The R multiples, if I multiply by alpha inverse, then I get R. So the inverse of R alpha is R times alpha inverse. And it is in general too optimistic if that the sum of two principal ideals is but what you can hope is that the sum of two ideals is invertible. So here is a fairly elementary statement from algebraic number. So bring of k, then the following
are equivalent. First of all, the sum. Now let me put it in another way. Look at the set of R invertible ideals. And I like this to be closed under a so that your thing is similar to what I wrote down over Z. You can divide by sum, which is what we like to do. That is the case actually all. ideals are invertible if it is also equivalent is a little more work that for all alpha and beta star deal generated by alpha and beta is invertible just ideals generated by it trivial, but I trust it is one of exercises for the problem sessions. And all things are equivalent to R, the full ring of inputs of K. So, in particular, if we want R to be an order as we typically want, then they should be equal. And that is something of a disappointment. We should not expect this set of vertible R ideals to be closed under because that really forces us to consider OK and that thing that I will never cannot reasonably be done. Any questions? Is there a um, they, they say there's a problem with this new this mic now, so they want to switch. Okay. This one has been fixed. Is this the third one or the first one? Um, Irrelevant. You don't need to know. Ah, oh well, I'm curious. I mean, yeah, I think it's this, is, uh, this is curiosity-driven science, you know. Like, uh, off, off, no, off, on. Okay, yeah. so now I, I think it works. Yeah, okay. okay. It, it just, it, they said this one is not cutting out for the recording if you start it. Let's see. Oh, that is my hearing aid. Very good. That one goes back. <laughs> uh, this one there. Uh, and there's it's in my pocket. Okay. I take five uh, minutes more at the end, John. Apology problem. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yes, you can take uh, five okay. minutes. Oh. Okay. Okay, so let's hope that this one will work. Okay, so let me, so are there any questions? Yes. You do not believe that. Because the way you define order, any element of the field, 